What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today with more Scrap Mechanic and today we're looking at an awesome build that was inspired by the main assembly devs. So they've been posting a lot of different builds in their Twitter such as this one here which is a piston cartwheel sort of robot so as you want to move forward it actually pushes each piston in behind it and then it turns by tilting all the pistons in one way or the other and I decided to recreate the exact same thing in scrap mechanics so here we've got our epic piston wheel and uh, we can just hop in and if we press the one button you'll notice that it will push the back piston and once it gets going it actually rolls really, really smooth. And you can see when we want to turn, it tilts them all in one direction. And if we want to turn the other way, it tilts them all back the other way. So it's super, super smooth. You'll notice it's a little bit bouncy because the physics and scrap mechanic are obviously way different than the physics and main assembly. But it's really, really awesome. I love this build. It's such a cool concept. And of course, I can't really take any credit for the concept. But regardless, it's pretty much like one of the best vehicles I've ever built. And it's so smooth. Like, I mean, the turning isn't the greatest. It kind of bounces a fair amount. But it is a really, really smooth vehicle and surprisingly easy to build. Each individual piston just activates on an AND gate. And they just kind of connect in a sort of smart way to the sensors. Each piston actually requires two sensors in order for it to push and that just makes sure it's always rolling forward so you just make sure it's always grabbing the sensor that it's currently on plus the sensor in front of it and if both of those are lit up then you push that piston and if we wanted to reverse it and have it go in the opposite direction we could hook up another set of and gates and reverse the sensor order and it would do the same thing but you can see it just it goes over everything like it's it's just pistons right like it just pushes and you can't really flip it either because even if you try and flip it you can just turn it left and right and it'll eventually get back up on itself. Oh, you can see, like, look at this. So we flipped and, oh, maybe, no, maybe we actually are screwed. Right, so you know how I was saying you can't flip it? Tur turns out, turns out you can flip it. So obviously this is pretty much a complete build. Uh, there's no reverse function in it, like I said, but I don't really plan on putting reverse in this. This was just sort of a proof of concept. But what I want to do today is take this same mechanism and instead of having the steering on the mechanism itself, I want to make a basic car where each of the four wheels is a piston wheel like this. So the wheel will be in the hub, but it'll have individual pistons on each wheel and see if we can actually make a car that drives with four piston wheels. I feel like it would be really cool if it works. It might destroy the frame rate of the game. But uh, I feel like it's definitely something worth trying. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, I think, is just make a wheel. Um, and that, we're just going to do a square of pistons. So we'll actually build the wheel flat. It'll just be easier to hook everything up. So we'll do it like this. And we can just have four pistons, one on each side, like so. And then we'll just put one in the middle with a 45-degree joiner piece. And, uh, I mean, that'll be good enough, I think. Hopefully this will work. So we can just do something like this. We're going to have a lot of wiring, but I feel like we're just going to put all the wiring in the car. I don't really want to have to deal with all the wiring on each individual wheel because it's just going to get too big. I want the wheels to be nice and small and not be like super, super bulky. Like that wheel is pretty nice, but you can see the interior of the hub is where all the wiring is and it all just kind of connects to the middle and that works fine, but it's not exactly the greatest in terms of uh, making a small wheel. You kind of have to have a whole seat in there and you know, it makes this wheel rather bulky. So for the car, we're definitely going to need small wheels. Um, so we'll just have to do this and then we'll flip this over and put four more pistons on the other side. Now I'm pretty sure this is just going to be on free floating bearings. So it's just going to be one bearing like this. That attaches to the car and everything else will kind of work off that. All right. And then in order to give this something to push against, we're just going to use, again, the caution blocks. We'll make these three wide just so they're a little bit, you know, wider than just a single block width. And uh, hopefully that gives it a little bit more traction. To be perfectly honest, I don't think it's going to matter. I also realized, too, I forgot to put a sensor on each one of these. So we're just going to have to go back and put a sensor on them. And then we should be good to hook this up to a vehicle. Okay, so we've got our four wheels here. And I could probably do this more intelligently and set up all the logic for one wheel and then duplicate that four times. But we're just going to weld them to the car and then kind of set up all the logic on the car. So let's just make a really, really basic car shape. Um, I don't exactly know how big we want this to be, but we'll just do, you know, something that fits, you know, a two-seater type deal. And uh, we'll, we'll break it off like that and cut it here. There we go. Perfect. You know, let's just make it, there we go. A nice four-seater piston car. Why not? I feel like that's going to be good enough. Okay, so we're just going to mount the back wheels right at the back here. I don't know how much space we actually are going to need between the back and the front wheels because obviously the pistons are going to expand. Same sense, steering the front wheels might be really, really difficult, but 
Uh, let's just grab a couple of them here, weld them on to these out points here. All right, for the front, I think we're just going to bring this forward like that. And then we're going to do some pipe piece work because I don't want it to accidentally interfere with the wheels. So I feel like we need to just do it as small as possible. Right? And then we can curve this up actually like this and then go over and down and put our bearing like so. And I think that's lined up quite nicely. And then we'll do the same over here. All right. And just like that, we've got a car with piston wheels that are hooked up. The steering looks good. It doesn't look like it's going to interfere too much as long as... The piston there doesn't extend and hit the body, but we should be fine. So let's uh, hook up some of the logic. Now, I don't really want to do this with a WS converter, uh, mainly because WS converters in vanilla aren't that great. You'll notice we're not using any mods in this. This is completely vanilla, this build. So I think we're just going to do it with two switches. Um, we could always hook it up to a WS converter later. Actually, you know what I think we're going to do instead is instead of using a switch, we're going to hold W, we'll hook into a piston, which goes to a sensor, and that'll be your forward. And reverse will be a button. So you can press reverse with the button. And steering is just steering. So for forward, really, we can just put a uh, piston here across the back like so. And actually, we can move this over a little bit there, put that piston. And then, of course, we can just have a block with a sensor. And then we hook the piston into a controller, which is also hooked into the seat. And I think if we just press this on one uh, and we hold W, it goes forward. And if we let go, no, it stays there. Hold, press S, it goes in reverse. Uh, wasn't there a way to get that to go backwards? I don't remember now. If I go loop, maybe? Hold W, it goes forward. Yeah, okay. So if it's set on loop, we hold W, it goes forward. If we let go of W, it retracts. Perfect, no problem. So that can be our, our W control. And then, of course, S, uh, we'll just have hooked onto a button just like this. And we can put a button down. You know what? We'll just put it right here like so okay so the final part of this build is actually not too bad it's just kind of a repetitive task so what we need is we need a bunch of gates for each wheel we need an or gate for each piston which is hooked into two and gates so one and gate goes forward and one and gate goes reverse and then it's just a matter of wiring it up now that i've seen this i'm kind of half debating on ripping the wheels apart and putting the gates like this around the outside of the wheel because i feel like we could have one gate on either side of the sensor to make up the wheel for forward and reverse. We're just gonna build a really simple board of eight of these gate setups, and then we'll just hook it up into each wheel individually. All right, so we just put a bunch of OR gates down like so, and put them along in a line, and then we'll put a bunch of AND gates behind them, and we'll just hook it up to each wheel individually. I know it's a little bit painful to do it this way, but you know what, it is it is what it is. We've already got the wheels attached, so I don't really wanna go back and detach all the wheels. Um, so we'll just kinda color code this to make our lives easier, so blue, will be attached to the pistons green will be to go forward and red will be to go in reverse all right excellent and then of course we could just break all this off and we can attach these both up to the blue one all right, and now all we got to do is just wire up everything in a really, really painful way. So in order to do this, it's actually kind of simple, but not really. So we hook the sensor, which is W, uh, into all the green ones because we need the green end gates to fire when we're going forward. And then we hook one, which is the, of course, the reverse button into all the red ones. And now this should really just light everything up and we can, of course, test that. So we press W. All the green ones light up, and if you press 1, all the red ones light up. And then to do all the inputs, it's just all the sensors. So we have to hook one of these into each one of the pistons, so we can do that. And actually, you know what, let's do this on the lift, so we make sure that all of them are hooked up to the same one. Uh, so we can go the first one, it'll be the first one in that row, second one to that one, and so on. And then to do the actual sensor sort of driving mechanism, uh, that's a little bit different. So this first piston here when we're going forward, it would activate with this sensor, but we only want it to push when this piston is behind the sort of the front point of the wheel, which means we also want to activate with the sensor in front of it. And then the same sense for reverse, we activate this one with the sensor in behind it. Now this is going to get really, really messy really quick. So it's always the sensor that you're currently on for each one, but then to go forward, it's the sensor in front of it and to go backwards, it's the sensor in behind it. And uh, I'll just wire up the rest of these and we can actually check if this one wheel works properly, which it should. All right, so I think I've wired this wheel up. It it becomes a mess, but hopefully this is right. So W, 
pushes it forward, which is what it's trying to do. Obviously, it's a little bit janky because uh, the rest of the vehicle doesn't work, but it seems like that's it's what it's trying to do. You can see the piston underneath plus the piston behind, uh, but it is trying to spin us. And then if we press 1, it should try and spin it in reverse, which it also seems like it's doing. But I think I think we're good to go on that wheel, and then we just have to hook up all the other ones. So about halfway through wiring up the second wheel on this vehicle, I realized it's a really, really, really stupid way to do this because the logic is just going to get messy. The logic doesn't line up and getting the sensors front and back is just so easy to make a mistake. So I went back and redesigned the wheel and uh, we've got a much better version here. So I actually built the wheel out of logic blocks. So it should be completely wired up and you can see each sensor goes to the AND gates on either side of it, as well as the ones before and backwards. So there's a green gate here in the middle and another one below it, which is red. And one of them will spin the wheel in one direction and one of them will spin the wheel in the other direction. So we should be able to duplicate this, spawn it on all four sides and pretty much be good to go. We just got to wire up a few gates and we should be set. All right, perfect. So they're all hooked up. We just got to wire up some controllers here. So let's just hook these into these bearings and again, get some 45 degree angles going. And we'll do that on both the front and the back. And then really we just got to figure out which one is reverse and which one is forward for each of the wheels. Um, they're color coded red and green, but depending on which side the wheel is mounted on, I think it'll change which one is forward and which is reverse. This is a very tedious process, unfortunately. You just kind of have to guess and check. If I was smarter, I'd probably know which way is which, depending on which way I mounted the wheel, but, you know, I, I of course don't. Um, okay, so that looks good. That looks like they want to move forward. All right, and then we just kind of do the front. Um, so I think this should be the same as the one in behind it, right? So this is going to the inside on this one. So it should go to the inside on this one, I would think. Outside on this one and inside here. And if we press W, do we move? I mean, it's trying to. Oh, 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 oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, <gasps> it's working. We're getting some movement finally. Why that front right wheel doesn't seem to work as well as the rest. Oh my goodness. This actually works. I can't believe it. Okay. Turning is a problem. It definitely interferes with itself, but it, it actually works like it. It drives. It's much bumpier than the other version. I'm wondering if we can adjust the pistons maybe to make this smoother. Maybe slow the pistons down a little bit, but it actually works. This is crazy. Or maybe, what if we just add a bunch of weight? You know what? Let's just add a ton of weight to this vehicle so the pistons don't have enough power to lift because there are four pistons all pushing up at the same time. Maybe that's just causing the vehicle, you know, a lot of excess jumpiness oh yeah that's much better the more weight you add it seems to get better and better so scrap mechanic physics just uh doesn't like the fact that it's too light this is awesome this is so cool literally the future of yeah no that that doesn't work it kind of when you turn it hits that's we need more distance on the front but this is insane like this is such a cool vehicle holy cow i can't believe that Actually, you know what? We're we're barely there on the front. We just need to remove this section right here. And I think it won't hit anymore when we turn. Perfect. Just like that. I think we're good to go. And if we press 1, of course, we can go in reverse, right? If we hold the 1 button. Um, sometimes the wheels get jammed. It seems like they have to get, like, enough momentum to really go to the next point. There we go. You just kind of let go of it. All right. It definitely works better in forward than reverse. Come on, let's go. Stop, that back wheel's jammed. Well, the one last test I want to do is, since this is a car, I want to see if we increase the piston speed to max, if that'll help us at all or if that'll hurt us. I feel like we're at half speed right now. I think slowest is not good because you want to kind of maintain a little bit of momentum with the pistons and you want to make sure they have enough pushing power to really kind of move the car forward. But let's try it on max and see what happens. I will say though, this thing is hilariously amazing. Uh, but definitely not as good as the mono wheel. I'll of course upload the single wheel version of it to the workshop. I don't think I'm going to upload this version because it is just sort of an experimental test. Okay, so here we go. Max speed piston test in three, two, one. Oh god. Okay. Well, it bounces a lot. 
Are we gonna move? Are we gonna roll? Uh, maybe. Oh, you know what? This is actually, this is actually so much better once it gets moving. That front wheel's jammed up. That's okay though. It just gets pushed by the rest. This is actually really, really good. Ah, uh, maybe. You know what? It just, it still bounces a lot. I feel like the car is just not in sync with each wheel. If the wheels were in sync, maybe it would work a little bit better. Definitely a stupid idea though, and I can't believe this doesn't completely destroy the game. I mean, there's like 32 pistons on this creation. You would think that it would destroy the game at some point. Make sure, of course, you guys let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you do come up with one that works really, really well, definitely go to my Discord and post a link there in the uh, community creations because I'd love to see one that's super fluid and smooth. This one is about as fast as I can make it when I speed up the pistons on this one during testing. Uh, it just it just became too bouncy and kind of flew all over the place. But it would be really cool to see if it's possible to make a super fast piston wheel and uh, I think it would be really awesome. But definitely let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And while you're at it, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And we'll see y'all next time.